Help support the companies that support our community. All right, I have a piece of maple here. So what I'm gonna do, I have it in between centers. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it true and then put a tenon down on this end and then we'll get it in the chuck and start shaping the vase. All right, I have it all hollowed out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take it off of the lathe and put it onto the carving stand. We're gonna open up the top a little bit and cut into it with the air saw. Grab a pencil and trace it out where I'm going to cut, and then the, then we'll use the air saw. So I'm just bringing it down. We're going to open it up about right into there. All right, I'm going to adjust it a little bit to where it's better arc. But Robin is standing right behind beside me, so I can't get a good eye on it. <laughs> There we go. All right. All right, I think we got it refined with the guidance of Robin. So I'm gonna take my air saw here. So this has a metal blade on it. And so don't use a wood blade if you're gonna, gonna do stuff like this. The, the metal blade, the teeth are a lot finer. So it actually just cuts like butter. If you used a wood blade, it would try and catch and grab. You can see it, you can almost like draw with it. 
it's it works really nice so definitely use a uh, metal blade going to I'm gonna go down just a little bit more than about like that all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and sand this I want to have a little bit of a lip on this when I'm done so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on the lathe and just work on sanding it all right and just kind of rough sanded that so I brought this down a little bit so that the actual lip is a little bit thicker I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it down some more but I wanted to find wh where the bead is gonna be so it's gonna have a bead all the way around it and it's come down and blend in this little chisel right here it is a power grip chisel and it's cupped out just like that so I'm just gonna go around just like this and kind of make my bead and it will keep it the same distance and then there's still going to be a bunch of sanding but this will help me know exactly where to sand so it's just leaving a little line around here so I'm going to keep working my way around with that All right, it was getting late last night, so I stopped. So it's the next day and I'm still working on it. So what I'm doing now is I kind of made that little bead with the other chisel just to define it. And now I'm taking the flat chisel here and just going around and refining that, that edge right there. And then I will get back to sanding. So with this, there is, there's a lot of sanding. You gotta bring down this material. So I left the vase a little bit thick so that when I do sand down this material here, I don't, don't go through the side. So I'm just gonna keep working on it. I'll come back in an hour or so when I get some more done. All right, got it pretty smoothed over. I am just going through all the grits and sanding, uh, sanding it all smooth. I just kind of rounded, rounded the edges over here. I'm working on, nope, oh, wrong way. Yeah, I got it all smoothed over down there. So I'm just gonna keep going through all the grits. I'm just kind of hand sanding the rest of it too to just get it all smooth. And then once we come back, we will, we're will gonna bring the this down and part it off and everything. So I'm just gonna keep working on it. All right, have this all sanded up. I'll pull it off the carving stand here. I got it all done. So all of this is sanded up to about 600 and but I still need to turn the bottom of it. So I'm going to put it back on the lathe and we will get this material off here and then sand that part of it.
All right, turn down there. I'll go ahead and just saw it off. And then we will clean up the bottom of it with the Jacob's chuck. Clean up the bottom real quick. I'll put the sanding pad on the Jacob's chuck and get the bottom cleaned up. And then we're gonna actually color the lip here. I'm gonna use the pins for the basket illusion. I'm gonna color that lip. Alright, so I'm going to use the same pins that I, I used for the basket illusion. So it's a permanent ink and they hold really well. So I'm just going to color the the lip there. And I grabbed one of the one of the bigger ones. So I'm just gonna slowly and carefully work my way around this. So it's gonna take a while, but yeah, I'm just gonna bring it down to where it blended in so I, when I was sanding it I just sanded all this down and then slowly just blended it in together so I will work on this and then we will come back when I'm done We're, I'm going to uh, put some walnut oil on it now. So the nice thing about these pins too is it won't bleed. You put the walnut oil right over the top of it. So I'm just going to wipe it on by hand. Normally I like sand with it, but we're just going to wipe it right on. So and you can see it, that ink doesn't, doesn't bleed out. This beautiful piece of maple got some fiddle back in it. There we go. I got it all done. So the vase is seven inches tall and four and a half inches in diameter. So when you're doing something like this, it, there's a lot of sanding in it. So you're bringing down all of this material to to leave that little lip on there. So. I kind of sped the video up a little bit, but it was a couple hours of sanding. I power sanded a little bit of this with the pad on the drill to bring it down down faster and then just kind of hand sanded that the bead around there. So it's it definitely a lot, <laughs> a lot of sanding, but I love the way it came out. I love that, that shape there. Um, yeah, you could do do a lot of different things with it too. You know, you could actually do it on, on different sides too, but it was, it was fun project just just a lot of my thumbs are don't have thumbprints on them anymore but it was fun so a couple things yeah so with the air saw before the air saw uh, the ink so I colored it with the ink and put the oil on right afterwards and a little bit of it did bleed onto the paper towel so I've done it before where I did basket illusions I don't know I can't remember whether I let it like set overnight and then put the oil on and it didn't do anything but it might have just been because I put it on pretty quick um, right after it but it, it's still on there it still looks great it, but it did bleed a little bit with the, when I was putting the oil on so maybe if you do it, do it with the pins let it sit overnight and then put a finish on it but it, it didn't didn't really take it off or anything but it, it still looks good so with the air saw um, Two, I use a metal, you know, like a, a metal hacksaw blade. It's 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 not a hacksaw blade, but it's it's a fine tooth metal blade, and it will cut just just like butter. I mean, you can literally draw with it. So I had a comment on an older video I'd done years ago, and the guy he was talking about using a hacksaw blade cutting wood, and he thought that was dangerous, and it's the exact opposite. 
I actually had the lathe spinning and I had a piece of wood and I didn't want to waste any of it so I used a hacksaw blade and because the teeth are so fine on it it won't catch so don't turn the lathe on and use like a wood wood blade on it because the teeth are bigger and it will grab on you if you you can do that but put the lathe in reverse so if it does or when it does catch it goes the opposite direction of you but i recommend just using if you're going to do that use a hacksaw blade it won't catch it'll just slowly cut it just like that does and it's uh it's a nice smooth fine cut too so all right um i think that was that was about it as far as the metal blade and the ink. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next week. Take care.